Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of my workshop. This is the first ever tour of my workshop. As any of you know who have a workshop, it's an ever-changing and ever-evolving animal. Now, we recently just hit 34,000 subscribers and I want to thank each and every one of my subscribers. I want to thank all my patrons for their continued support. I also want to thank everyone who goes shopping my website and those who buy a t-shirt. Each and every bit goes towards helping this channel and keeping it up and running. Thank you, I appreciate it. So let's get to it. I'll show you around and give you a better sense for how I work in this space. You wanna see what's behind this door? This messy area at the back of my shop is where I store my wood and most of the lumber that's ready to work with. I also have a few odds and ends back here. I store my table saw at the back here. I have high shelves on either side of the shop where I can store jigs and tools and clamps. So those come in really handy. The previous owners of this house left them behind. I'll jump around a little bit as I move through this. Over this corner, I have my mobile tool cabinet. So as you can see, I have easy access to things like clamps and hold downs. I've got also very easy access to things like hardware. I'm a pack rat when it comes to hardware, so this is really handy for me. I've got all sorts of screws and brad nails and things like that stored away in the second drawer. And in the third drawer, I usually keep things like homemade dominoes or uh, loose tenons and my brad nailer. I've got a few odds and ends in here, but this is great for storing larger tools. I could put a circular saw in here and take it on the road with me. It's served me well so far. This is also on wheels, but I did not get a special festival cart for it. I have a domino joiner, I use that for a lot of my production work, but I also have empty sustainers that I purchased because they make really great toolboxes, and honestly, for around 100 bucks, um, they do a pretty good job of storing other tools that I have, and it's really easy to move this around. It also just comes apart, so I can pick and choose what I need if I need to take it with me. They just pop right back on there and lock up. And now I have one big tool cabinet again. So down beside that is where I keep my CT36 dust extractor. This is a fairly new addition to my shop. And the reason why I purchased this is because Festool makes some of the best dust extractors on the market. What I really love about the Festool dust extractor is it works perfectly with things like my Makita sanders, which I'm really excited about. All I did was put a little bit of electrical tape on the dust port and I hook it up to the hose and it sits on there perfectly like it's made for it. So I'm really excited to have this in the shop. Keeping dust under control is a big priority for me. If you saw last week's video, you saw me build this upgrade for my workbench. It's taken about two years, but I finally tuned this into the workbench that I've always wanted. And as I showed you last week, I can use my Veritas clamps, which are really versatile on this multifunction bench. They're really almost made for it. Another thing that works really great with this is the Festool Quick Clamp. So basically I can just put something down really quick and it's not going anywhere. This Veritas clamp is a 360 clamp. It'll just clamp anywhere. And of course, if I want to clamp onto the front, it's super easy to do that. I don't have a permanent vice system set up on this bench, nor will I be getting one. These clamps are actually fairly expensive as clamps go, but they're still cheaper than buying a full vice. Up above my workbench, I have my wall of tools. These are the hand tools that I use most frequently in the workshop, and I can just grab what I need off the wall right away, and use it, put it right back. It is really great. Everything is totally visible and easy to access at any moment. Up off the top shelf here is a chisel rack that I made. 
and that stores all of the chisels that I use on a regular basis. I have a set of bench chisels. I've got various Japanese chisels. I've got some chisels that I've picked up at garage sales and flea markets. I've got a long chisel rack here. It's a growing addiction. And I've got plenty of room for more. Up at the top, you can see my hand planer installed into my jointer jig. And then beside the chisel rack, there's various hardware. And you'll see two computer speakers up top. And that is my shop stereo system. What I use for my shop stereo system is this little Bluetooth receiver. I just plug that in right here at the top. The other end plugs into my computer speakers and then I can access music or podcasts off of my phone. And underneath my workbench, you'll see my Porter Cable air compressor. I've got a scrap bin under there as well. And right beside there on the other end, I've got my old rigid shop vac, which I still use quite a bit. Moving over to the other side of the shop. All right, starting at this end, I have my drill press, which is a really cheap drill press. I think I only spent about 150, maybe $200 on it. Right beside my drill press, I have my swivel vise, which basically does this. So I can set up different clamping configurations off of this. I use it mostly for metalworking. I picked this up at a flea market two summers ago. It was a really good find and I couldn't pass it up. On the other side of my drill press, I have my drill bit and router bit storage rack. You may have seen the video for this before the holidays. I have my sandpaper storage rack up above the drill press. It's a little messy right now, um, but it still keeps me a little more organized than I used to be. Right now, this stores up to seven different grits. I might make a bigger one at some point, but for now, this does the job. Beside that, I have some various metalworking tools and I've got um, a rack for files. And then next door to that are my shop cabinets. I can store things like my DeWalt circuiter saw. I've got my sanders over here. I keep my DeWalt router and jigsaw in the third compartment. And of course, then I've got my plunge router in the last compartment and a few odds and ends. So this works out really well. It uh, keeps the tools relatively dust free. Uh, right below that, I have my sliding compound miter saw. It's installed onto a Ryobi miter saw stand. I kind of adapted the Makita saw to the stand because I like the stand so much. I don't think they make it anymore. You can quickly set up stop blocks and you can extend the arms out whenever you need them and fold them back in. It's easy to hook up the dust collection to the back of the miter saw. So it allows me the uh, ability to run the hose underneath. Down below the miter saw is a set of shop cabinets that I built years ago. My older Ryubi tools uh, are still in here. I've got a belt sander, things like that. Beside the cabinet here is my little MIG welder. That doesn't get used a lot, but it's handy to have if I'm doing a little bit of metalworking. Right next door to that, you can see I've got my big mallet. I have a biscuit joiner. I've got my K4 pocket hole jig here. All that stuff just kind of tucks away off to the side. Hanging off the shelf here is my framing nailer, which I plan to put to use again this summer to do some outdoor projects. I just hang my air hose on it when I'm not using it. Up top, there's a shelf for some jigs, etc. Over in this corner of the shop, I have my three-in-one station, which consists of my bandsaw, my belt sander, disc sander, and down below that, I have my old Ryobi thickness planer. I can easily move this all around the shop and use it wherever I want. For this size of shop, this is a really great space saver and I'm happy with the solution. This was probably a paint rack from a hardware store. It was left behind by the previous owners. And what I like about it is that I can store these clear plastic things in there and access anything. It's all labeled. It's all easy to find. I keep my drill bits, my Dremels up here, and I've got a couple of ratchet sets down below. Paints and glues are usually stored near the bottom here. And up above that hardware rack is where I store my router table. 
Next, I have my wall of axes. This first one is a Viking replica axe. The second one is a carpenter's axe by Hulta Force. This is probably my favorite axe. I take it with me camping actually, and I take it into the woods. Next to that I have my Trail Boss Camp Axe, uh, which I have used as well. I've brought it camping with me. And then down below that, I have my little Russian hatchet. This collection will keep expanding when I get a bigger shop. For now, I think I have room for one more axe and then I'm done. So that concludes my shop tour for 2019. If you're a woodworker, you know this, you never have enough space. You always want to keep expanding and definitely that will be the plan for the next year or two is to look at getting a larger space. I've had smaller workshops before so I can't really complain. This space has been working out for me pretty well. If you'd like to buy me a beer, head on over to my Patreon page over here. Please remember to like, share and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side you can watch. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.